Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church near Ely. I'm glad we are here, gathered by um, technology, gathered out in the parking area, and the bell choir is gathered here in the sanctuary. With nature and its power and its beauty, in frigidity and in melt, with ancient rocks and new sprouts under the ground, with believers and seekers throughout the whole wide world. With people in every land and every language, we gather to praise God. With angels and worshipers in heaven, with founders who built this community here, with all who have and do worship in this place, we gather in praise of God. With Jesus who promises his presence, and the Spirit who showers us with blessings, we gather here in the praise of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, in this time, in this moment, we find home. You who made the skies, Christ who is our teacher and Savior, the Spirit who is the giver of gifts, you are with us and we are with you. For the right roads that we sometimes avoid traveling and the kind words we refuse to share, for all the false gods who receive our worship and our time and our true selves, which we've often hidden. God, by your grace, forgive us. For the hidden hurts we've held tightly and the promises which we haven't kept, for the careless use of our time and money and lame excuses we never should have made. God, by your grace, forgive us. For all we should be, and we can amend, God, in your love, renew us. For you have in store for us your plans in your love. Prepare us for the life and the love of the days to come. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And hear the words of Jesus today. Your sins are forgiven and live in peace and follow. Follow the Christ. Amen. For children's time today, I want to say and talk about an old story in the um, First uh, Testament, in the Old Testament. And it's about a king named Nebuchadnezzar. You need to know how to spell that. You may have to look it up. It's a tricky one. And three boys. The spelling gets even harder at this point. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king had made a big statue made of gold, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. And he had declared and he said to say to all the people, Listen to my command when you hear the sound of musical instruments bow to the ground and worship this gold statue. Anyone who refuses will be thrown into the blazing furnace. So at the sound of the music, all the people turned wherever they were and faced the statue and bowed before the gold statue, except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would not bend. So, as you can imagine, the king was very angry about this and had the three brought to him. And he asked them, is it true that you refuse to worship the gold statue that I have made? I will give you one more chance. If you refuse, 
You'll be thrown into the hot furnace. And then the three said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the furnace, it is because we worship God alone. He will rescue us from your power, and even if he doesn't, we will make it clear to you that we will never bow before your golden statue. The king was even more furious, and he had them thrown into the furnace. He wanted to see how that was going, so he checked. And when he looked in this big furnace, he didn't see three, but he saw four. Four. How is that possible? How are they still alive? Who was that fourth one? I wonder. So the king said, well, let him out of the furnace. And then he realized he said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, for no other God can be present and saved in this way. They chose to follow God even though it meant that maybe terrible, terrible things could happen to them, and they weren't sure how things were going to go in the future. But regardless of how that was, they had the courage to worship God alone, even harder when circumstances are difficult. They weren't interested in worshiping things. And it encourages us to do likewise, to worship the living God and not worship things. Would you say the pretzel prayer with me and cross your arms and repeat after me? May the Lord watch between you and me while we are absent, one from another. Amen. Now those on Facebook live streaming are going to see a little bit of movement, so try not to get seasick.
great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of a mountain are also his. The sea is his, for he has made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the sheep of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does it mean to be a Christian these days? Three weeks ago, we read and reflected in the first chapter of Mark on how Jesus called his disciples, and he said the simple words, Come, follow me. And folks have been following ever since. What does it mean to be a Christian today? Well, I think we should follow those words that Jesus said. Come, follow me. That's a good place at least to start, isn't it? When we want to follow Jesus to find God, we do so individually and together. The together part has been maybe the biggest challenge in recent days. But we are together in our own unique way at this time, near and far, connected by technology, sure, but also connected by our hearts, our love, our spirits. In our psalm today, we are encouraged to do what we are doing right now, worshiping. It says, let us make a joyful noise. Let us come into his presence. For God, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Nature itself worships and we are designed to worship too. The birds sing, the stars shine, the moon reflects the brightness of the sun. The fields wave in the wind. The sap flows in the earliest moments of springtime. And when we decide, we get to be part of this great symphony of nature that sings praise by their own behavior. Or we can choose to reject it. Today, we choose yes. Praise God. We seek God's glory. We long to connect with God and with one another, and renew our peace, revive our spirits. We are asked to give one day out of seven, Sabbath as it's called, and even now as we have the shortened time of worship together, before and after our together worship, we can still have Sabbath individually. Together we lift our praise and give our thank offering to God, and later we can build on that. In Genesis chapter 4, the New Living Translation writes about Cain and Abel and uses these words to translate the ancient Hebrew words. It says, when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. And when it was time for harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord, Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. And the Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain terribly angry, and he looked dejected. The Lord asked Cain, why are you so angry? Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. This is a telling story about worship. Also the dynamics of brothers. But today, thinking about worship. When sacrifice was the way to worship, the younger son, Abel's, 
offered his best portion, it says. And Cain offered some of his um, crops as a gift. The best or some? Hmm. What do we offer? Cain's intentions were even rejected by God asking him directly these questions. Why are you angry? Why do you look so dejected? And then says, do what is best. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. Do what is right. Hmm. It reminds me a little bit of our parable from last Sunday of the prodigal son and his angry older brother. This story about Cain and Abel is a very scary story as you read on in it. But it reminds us in this portion to think about offering our best, our best lives, our best work, our best intentions, offering them to God without seeking payback or benefit or some sort of con contractual blessing. When Cain wanted something in return for his offering, he was rejected. When Abel offered his best without expectation, he was blessed. So what can we do with that? Well, we can think about how we worship and what we offer. And do we expect something in return? At the core of their offerings are the words, thank you. Thank you to God. At the core of our worship, individually and together, are those two same words. Thank you. That's what it boils down with. It boils down to. So when we worship this one day out of seven together, even if the preaching is terrible, and even if maybe the music doesn't rock your boat this week, it isn't really about those aspects, about gaining, but more about giving between you and God, acknowledging that humble and honest and even unvarnished relationship. Our worship is say about saying thank you in the good, in the ugly, in the painful, in the productive, expressing our love for God. Our word worship comes to itself from an old English word called worthship or worthship. What is worth? What is worthy of our honor? What's worth it? Of our respect, of our awe, what is the answer we give when we say, well, what did you do? And we know we were at worship. We give our awe and our respect and our reverence to God. What is important enough for my time? What's important enough for my household's time? What's important enough? Whether it's 9.30 on Sunday morning, or, you know, when you're working or traveling or sleeping or have other commitments, what can you log into later these days? Revelation chapter 4, verses 5 through 11 says, in the center, is this a vision, a vision of heaven. In the center and around the throne were four living beings, each covered with eyes, front and back. The first of these living beings was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face. The fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings were covered all over with eyes, inside and out. Day after day, night after night, they kept on saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is still to come. 
Whenever these living beings gain glory and honor and thanks to the one who is sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, 24 elders fell down and worshiped the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, and they lay their crowns before the throne and they say, you are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and they existed because you created what you pleased. So this is a different look of worship, a vision, a dream, a hope, kind of a confusing picture. A throne room of God, where God is surrounded by winged creatures and elders, and these symbols of worship say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is and is coming. Maybe this is a good model for us to think about as practicing worship. One day out of seven. Because we need it. God saw fit to encourage us and even put it in the Ten Commandments. You might say, too much. Can't do it. Every week? Nope. But it is just like your tablet or your phone, and you watch the battery start going down, and you try to get just the last bit of that battery energy out, but it goes from 8% to 6% to 5%, to 4% and bam, it turns off. And you can't revive it by just pressing the on button anymore or swiping the screen. It's been, ch the charge has gotten too low. Maybe from overuse, maybe from just setting it aside and not paying attention to it. But that battery had, can only do so much. For us, we have to eat regularly, sleep regularly, worship regularly, or else our souls kind of run down. We become empty, we become weak, and we don't do the best that we can all the rest of the time. My final biblical example this morning is from the, the Acts of the Apostles. So it follows the four Gospels, and it tells about the believers after Jesus walked here on earth, and it describes what they did to worship. Acts 1, chapter 4, they gave thanks to God. Acts chapter 4, verse 24, they prayed for one another. Chapter 2, verse 42, this has a bunch. They sang psalms and hymns and spirituals. They reflected on the scriptures and Jesus. They encouraged one another. They shared communion and they ate together. Chapter 10, verse 4. They collected an offering of love and, great, and gratitude to God and sought to help, to help and sought to help others. And chapter 19, verse 18, they confess their sins to God and to one another. So we are in the season of Lent. And this Lent, we are getting back to basics. We've had quite a year. And it's time to consider where we've been and where we are going. To rededicate ourselves. This week, the emphasis is on worship, next week on study, and then the following weeks of Lent, the practices of service and giving and sharing. It kind of sums up the answer to that first question I proposed of what does it mean to be a Christian? Westminster Catechism, which is foundational to our Protestant way of seeing the world, asks and answers lots of questions. The first, most, first and foremost is probably the most important for us. 
Even as NASA and the nation celebrated the landing of the rover this week, we think about what the answer is to this catechism question. We are all seeking answers of, is this it? Do we live on the only speck of dust that has or have ever had life? Is this all? And the Westminster Shorter Catechism asks it in this way. It says, what is the chief end of man? Or to modernize, what in the world are we here for? And it answers the question, to glorify God and enjoy him forever. You have to love those verbs, glorify and enjoy. Our worship is about glorifying and enjoying. Not just ourselves in a self-serving way, but in a revival kind of way. In our communion with the Creator, we receive His love. In our quiet and noisy prayers of thank you, listen for the Holy Spirit replying that you're welcome. In following the walk of Christ, let us be refreshed and walk on in strength. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God and Maker. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. For you, Creator God, the valleys laugh and sing, the trees clap their hands. You summon us to break silence and be one with the song of creation. We give you thanks and praise. For you, God of all, the church is in myriad forms and countless technologies and languages, but all in honor of you. In heaven and beyond our seeing, the angels and creatures and worshipers are caught up in song, and those we have loved and lost are part of that great company. They call us to be one with the harmony of heaven. So in this moment, we give you thanks and praise. We gladly join our voices with those of earth and sea and sky in a universal song of praise echoing through time, echoing through place. Holy, holy, holy. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Come now, O Christ, bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, forever bound to us in promise and mystery. Breathe your spirit on us, on this bread and cup. Let them become for us the sail and the sign of your love, healing, redeeming, making us whole. And through them, let us together become for you, your body, loving the world as you do, serving its people as you will, and always being transformed until we and all humanity resemble the one who invites us to this table. As Jesus broke bread, so we break this bread. As Jesus shared this wine, so we will drink this cup. We have been invited by you, O God, and so we come to your table. Amen. We take our bread and we remember the blessing, the breaking, the sharing, and the eating. And we take the cup. We share this cup, for in Christ, who comes to us with love from God, we remember that these are the gifts of God for the people of God, for you. Praise be to God.
Let us pray. Oh, brother, Jesus, we have been guests at your table. Come with us, wherever we are, wherever we go, and be present in all that we share. Whether the future is dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be heavy or light, our song be strong or weak, keep our hearts warm and our hands open, our lives ever embracing and ever being embraced by your love. We pray for others this morning. We pray for Ray's granddaughter facing surgery on Tuesday. We pray for those going through treatments and procedures. We pray for student and teacher, for emergency worker, for farmer and factory worker, for business owner and governing official. And we pray together the prayer that you have taught us today, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Take with you this blessing. The Lord watches over you. The sun is your shade. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. Amen. Before we conclude worship today, I would like to make an announce, two announcements. The first is that the Salt Shaker newsletter submissions are due today. Uh, the second announcement is next Sunday, the church building will be open again for in-person worship, abiding by the best guidelines that we have as we practiced in October and November when we gathered together. Three areas are available uh, to meet in the building, including the sanctuary, the lower level, and the church living room. Uh, worship will continue to be online for Facebook live streaming and Zoom as well. And the, the annual congregation meeting will be accessible next Sunday after worship by all of those means that I just mentioned. 
God bless you this week, and um, we'll see you next Sunday, if not before.